what I mean? You can put a label on a life. Put a label on a lifestyle. You know? Put a label on how you wake up every morning and go to bed at night. Okay, video number two on how to be a technician in exercise. You must become a technician. You're not going to get very far if your stole strategy is just to bust your ass. I guarantee you, you're going to wind up hurt, you're going to wind up burned out and bored and frustrated, and you're going to fulfill that much of your potential. However, for the technician, they're not sick, they're rarely hurt, they're always getting more progress week after week, year after year. To be a technician in exercise, hard work is important, but it's not the goal. Blood, sweat, and tears are not the sign of the effective workout or even the satisfying workout. Instead, the technician recognizes there are aspects of every exercise, this, this doesn't matter what tool you're using, free weights, machines, kettlebells, body weight, whatever, um, and they can manipulate any of these at will to fine tune and uh, basically what they're doing is they're kind of like a hacker. They are hacking their exercise just like a, a computer person will hack a computer and then basically break it down and use it as they need for their gains. So these are the things that you can break your exercise down into, and there's probably more, but I'm just scratching the surface here. Number one is speed, okay? How fast are you doing the technique? And you can break the, all of these down into, into other ones, like speed of as far as how fast are you doing a particular rep? You know, are you doing push-ups where you're coming off the floor, or are you trying to see how many push-ups you can do in like a five minute time? So actual speed, frequency, tempo, that sort of thing. Another thing too is range of motion, which I've talked about uh, in the past. My general thing is more is better with range of motion. If you have to shorten your range of motion, you're going backwards for your techniques. Mostly, there's exceptions to the rule. But if you're, I saw these guys one time, they were doing pull-ups and they were like basically coming up to here where their hands were barely coming, their forehead was barely coming to the height of their hands. 40 pounds on a dip out. It's like, dude, lose all that weight, get up there so that you're basically slamming your chest into the pull-up bar. Range of motion, not only just range of motion of your body as a whole or whatever tool you're using, but also your joints, okay? If you're doing push-ups or whatever with a wide, wide motion, you've got this kind of thing going versus if you're narrow, like the, the diamond style push-up, your elbows, shoulders, everything's got much more range of motion, even if your body's technically coming off the floor roughly about the same distance. Um, joint position is also huge. Where's your knees? Where's your elbow? A lot of times I see this when, I, when people do push-ups. They come down, they come up, and their joints circle. Their elbows kind of do these little circling things. What's the position of the joint at the beginning, at the end, at the range of motion? And this goes for every single joint in your entire body, regardless of the exercise. It, it requires that you look at your toes when doing pull-ups. It requires that you think of your back when doing push-ups. It requires you think of your neck when doing squats and lunges. Every joint matters. Where is it? What's its range of motion? Where is it moving? Trajectory of force. This is a big thing that I'm really looking into lately, especially with my push-ups. Because when people do push-ups, they got their hands typically on the floor. Sometimes they got a little bit of force going upwards, just like this, just a little tiny bit. Lately, I've been trying to concentrate on more force going directly into the floor, straight down with my hands. Makes all the difference in the world in that muscle activation. Um, trajectory of force also with the, the feet. You know, like with push-ups, who pushes down into the floor with your toes when doing push-ups? Play with it, it'll really surprise you what it does. Um, synergistic tension in other muscles. This kind of goes along with other things I'm talking about. Yeah, push-ups, great for your triceps and shoulders and chest, but who thinks of their back? Who tightens up their lats when doing push-ups? Quads, the, the, the muscles on the shin, the anterior tibialis. Who thinks of the tension in their face when they're doing push-ups? These are things the technician is always being aware of and manipulating around. Uh, muscle activation. Okay, you're doing push-ups. People say, I feel this in my chest, I feel this in my triceps. Or I get emails all the time, people saying, I want to get my chest working during this exercise. Muscle activation is about this. It's not necessarily about, you know, okay, turn your hands in a little bit more and move this away and so forth. That, that helps, but ultimately your muscles turning off and on and to what degree is under your control. And the technician is always playing with this. 
They're always trying to get better at engaging and activating muscle in every exercise to uh, their will. Um, weight shifting. Okay, where is your body weight? This is particularly with body weight stuff, but it also plays into role with other things. Okay, where is your body weight? Is it more towards your toes or towards your heels when you're squatting or lunging? Which toes? Outside toes, inside toes? Ball of the foot or toes themselves? Lately when I've been doing calf raises, I've been thinking, is my weight on my toes or more on my ball of my foot? These things make a difference. Tools. What kind of tool are you using? You use it, are you doing push-ups on a hard floor or are you doing it on carpet? Makes a difference. Or a medicine ball. How big is the medicine ball? Is it a basketball? Is there texture on the medicine ball? Is it the medicine ball inflated? These things all do come into play. And the last thing to know about this is there's a lot of these things to think about and manipulate. You know, it's, it's like the, the um, uh, sound boards in recording studios, right? You got hundreds of switches all over the place. The guy behind it, he's a technician. He is manipulating all these switches to get the sound just right. Well, you've got all of these things that you can be playing around with and manipulating and changing in little tiny bits to get the exercise just right. And it's easier to manipulate these things under lighter loads with strength training. So I don't care if you can do push-ups with one hand behind your back. Practice push-ups on your knees or at an, at an angle or an incline or something. I don't care if you can squat 800 pounds. Do body weight two-legged squats. Why? Because this stuff is a hell of a lot easier to manipulate under light loads. I did a video uh, previously about weighted calisthenics and the risk about adding a lot of extra resistance to an exercise is that it makes it harder to manipulate all of these factors. Therefore, the things you're basically going to be solidifying the same exact technical movement patterns. So if you don't use your chest very much in push-ups, and then you start adding plates onto your back, you're solidifying not using your chest very much. If you are not used to using, if you're using your biceps too much in pull-ups, and you start wearing a dip belt, you're basically telling yourself, okay, you know I was saying use your biceps more during pull-ups? Well now really use your biceps more during pull-ups. And you're solidifying things. You take things back a notch on the intensity, and it's much easier to say, okay, you know pull-ups, Biceps, okay, try those rear deltoids a little bit more. See what happens when you engage those suckers. What's the range of motion at the elbows? What's the chest doing? How are the hamstrings engaged? All these things are a lot easier to manipulate under lighter loads. So I know it's a long video, but I promise you that if you take this stuff to heart, it will radically change everything you ever do about exercise. Till then be fit, live free.